I'm Mposa Tole. As we continue, of course, with our rolling coverage on the Marshalltown tragedy, where at least 73 people have lost their lives in a fire. More than 50 people have been injured. We take you back to the scene now, where my colleagues, Kolim Gambi and Ziniko Mshaba, are following developments from the ground. Um, Toli, perhaps uh, starting off uh, with you, just uh, give us a sense of uh, um, some of the reaction that you're getting as the story becomes even more intense and you, you listen to the voices and see the faces of those who have been affected. Indeed, Mpo, the more we speak to the people, the more we are getting to understand what happened in the early hours of Thursday morning. This fire broke out at around uh, 1 or at least as one eyewitness says that it was at around 12.30 when he heard a loud bang and he assumes that there must have been gas tanks inside the building which is why at that loud bang and then he's the one who says he alerted authorities to come down here in order to help the people that were already screaming for help uh, the kinds of scenes that he has described as he tried to help some of the people who were running out of the building it is absolutely tragic and poor well as i can uh, tell you now the search and recovery efforts they are ongoing right now as we speak in the last hour the Johannesburg Emergency Service is telling us that uh, they were now sweeping the third floor. Uh, it's a five-story building, and so they were going to go to the building number four or story four, and then indeed the last floor, which is floor number five. So, uh, which puts page to what you have just said, that the death toll of 73 people, that could possibly rise. Well, let me quickly bring into the conversation... Uh, build one South Africa leader, Mr. Maimane, who has come down here. Mr. Maimane, thank you very much for your time. Make sense of this situation for us. Who do you believe has got to be held accountable for what's happened here today? Well, more than anything, today is a great tragedy for the people of our continent and this, in our country. And I really believe that it's a preventable tragedy. And I think the city of Johannesburg who are the owners of the building cannot be found to say they wanted to lease it or whatever. The reality is that it's their building. They should have done inspections. They should have ensured that there's no illegality in their building. And therefore the city must account for this tragedy. And beyond that, I'm calling upon all citizens, South Africans, let's come here and help. Because no, no life, it doesn't matter where that life is from or what context it comes from. This is a life. These are people. Let's stand together here today and make sure we come, help blankets, do whatever you can do. Because beyond this tragedy, those who must be held accountable will be held accountable. And I'll make sure of that. The youngest of the victims was a one-year-old. And the city tells us that um, they cannot find the NGO that they leased this building to. That person, from at least one uh, individual that we spoke to who says that, they lived here between 2016 and 2021. The person left around 2017. But, but my question for you is that the city seems to be apportioning blame, although they're not saying it in so many words, but they're saying that they are being prevented from taking over these buildings by NGOs. Is that a, um, a fair thing to say from the city? Because it would seem that they're shirking responsibility, at least from our system. It is. And it is, a, it is poor enforcement of law. The, the, the fundamentals are, we have metro police in the city. We've got SAPs. What citizen, what NGO is more powerful than a city in preventing it from doing inspections? They're saying the laws are in favor of the NGOs. It they're in favor of the those case. who hijack buildings. And therefore, when you try to evict them, the law says, well, you've got to give them alternative shelter. It cannot be an acceptable excuse in a building that is owned by the city that they failed to do basic law enforcement and actually came. If you own any building, it's appropriate for people to come and check your fire standards. It's appropriate for anyone who's the authority in that place 
uh, to make sure that those things are done. And therefore, if I own a building and something happens within that building, it's immaterial who was in that building, I am responsible for it. The city cannot be, in this instance, be allowed to shirk responsibility. And I'm calling upon them to come and account to the people of this country. We must stop this political mud swinging and revolving doors. We must now stand and say, those who should have done inspections must be held accountable. And ultimately, when it comes to this kind of tragedy, let's ensure that it never happens again. So this excuse that what kind of laws, who writes the laws in this country? It's absolute nonsense that the government can say, well, we are now beholden to our own systems. It's, it's rubbish. Today we must come here and whatever we need to do is hold those who are responsible accountable and come here and do proper inspections on all buildings in the city of Johannesburg. Mr. Maimane, let me thank you very much for your time. Leader of uh, One or Build One South Africa, that's his organization. And, well, Mpo, I I've lost my connection to you, but uh, let me tell you this, that uh, we are all over this story, having begun in the early hours uh, hearing people's accounts. And how tragic is that, Mpo Stone, that a one-year-old is among at least the seven children as... Mr. Mlaudzi, who speaks for the emergency services, told us earlier that among the 73 people, seven of those are children and the youngest, one year. Absolutely devastating. Um, Kolim Gambi, of course, uh, giving us a blow-by-blow -blow account on the ground of a developing story, a story that uh, we are covering here on Newsroom Africa, one that we will continue to get reaction from. In fact, uh, throughout the course of this afternoon, we'll be speaking to some of those NGOs who are, in all essence, being blamed here as uh, the question of accountability takes center stage. Let's, uh, of course, continue to, to bring you more. Zinikom Mslaba, also for following developments from the ground, Zinigo, you've been speaking to those affected by the tragedy and also almost getting a sense of how they're feeling after being traumatized by such an event. Well, they feel very, very distraught, I can tell you. But most importantly, they, they, they look and feel so helplessly because some of them have been saying that we do not know where we're going to sleep tonight. Yes, we understand that we've lost our appliances, we've lost our documents, but we've got little kids. And those kids right now need a shelter. They need a form of, um, of, of assistance in terms of making sure that they're able to cover their heads as they will be spending the night. And many of them are still on the streets, on the very same street where we are with their small and with their small blankets and whatever um, you know um, bag which has about few clothes with them some of them do not have anything besides the clothes that they're wearing so those are some of the sad stories sad scenes we've been seeing here throughout the morning people sharing their their challenges and all sorts of problems they need help with well right now um, i'm poor well a gift of the givers has touched down here in marshall town to come and assist in terms of uh, providing the workers who've been working very hard from midnight up until this point in terms of providing them with the essentials, especially when it comes to refreshment. As you can see there, uh, some are taking a breather from the heavy load duty they've been doing. You'll understand that this story broke at about midnight. That's where it broke out uh, on social media, but also on various uh, platforms online. But we're able to get here as early um, as possible as Newsroom Africa so that we give you as the latest blow by blow, blow, blow by blow of these developments. Let's bring in the gift of the givers now to get a sense of how are they finding this, uh, the, the, the situation here? What is it that they have observed? I've got Mr. Mabe here, who's the uh, signalizing officer of the gift of the givers. Mr. Mabe, talk to us about what you've seen so far and paint the picture for the viewer who's sitting at home wanting to know how are things down there in Marshall Town? Oh, the situation is bad here, sir. So we were called around 6 o'clock this morning to come in on a site and then uh, our, uh, the request was to, to get the, the firefighters uh, some refreshment and we did so, uh, we gave them food, uh, waters and, 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 and some uh, energy bar. Uh, until they hand over the, 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 the scene to disaster management and housing, and then we'll, take, we, 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 we take a, uh, we, we'll, see, we'll check uh, how, how, how many people are affected and then we'll, we'll take it from, from there. Just from the sense of the challenges faced by the people who survived this very, very painful uh, tragedy. What have you seen so far engaging with them? What, what, what sort of help, what kind of help do you think they need now, especially when it comes to essentials, so that they're able at least to live another day? 
from my side, I see the building because they lost everything. They lost everything. Everything is gone. But our team are on the ground. Uh, we, we, we loading the trucks. Uh, and now we're waiting for disaster to just to give us the list and they give us uh, the place where we want to take the people. And we're willing to we're willing to gauge. Just lastly, we've seen, we've been, my colleagues have been speaking to government officials here and some other stakeholders who are involved, who are responsible for some of these things. But when it comes to prevention of such incidents from your side, how crucial is that? And what is missing in those conversations where stakeholders, whether it's the private sector or government, in terms of making sure that we do not, we do not have such situations again in the future? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that one because uh, we are here as gift of the givers doing the relief for the people and the, and the workers. That one I, I cannot comment on the website. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mabe, there for your time. So they're here as gift of the givers to ensure that they assist and at least provide some form of uh, relief to the workers who've been working here, trying to rescue whoever they can rescue in this particular building. As I'm stepping out of short, they are taking a breather right now. Things have settled a bit from from this perspective, uh, as you can see, Mr. Mabe, they are walking to his colleagues. But if you can look uh, as we try to zoom into those visuals there, as you see EMS, emergency medical services, they are still there. Members from the South African police service are still there. Uh, it's all about now working the next step in terms of what needs to be done now. People have been evacuated. Some have lost their lives. But now what is going to be happening from what we understand is that Everyone who has a family member who has not been accounted for, that's the process now of trying to make sure that they identify the people who've lost their lives here who understand that they were taken to the Hillbro uh, Mutual. So whoever is still missing or still looking for a particular relative, they can make their way to the Hillbro police station so that they're able to identify the bodies of their loved ones. So that's the sad story. That's where we are right now. The reality will hit now when all these family members will have to go and try to identify their loved ones at a mortuary. Some of surviving people are at various health facilities here in Johannesburg. We understand some of them at the Chris Hardy Hospital in Soweto. So that's the situation from us for now, Paul. Back to you.